Have you ever wondered about the connection between polycystic ovarian syndrome and insulin resistance or high blood sugar, which it can result in later? Then check out today's video. We're going to talk more about why women with PCOS may most likely have insulin resistance and what you can do about it. So stay tuned. Have you ever wondered about the connection between PCOS, otherwise known as polycystic ovarian syndrome, and insulin resistance or blood sugar dysregulation, blood sugar problems? So today we're talking about just that, the connection, how one can cause the other and they can contribute to each other and what you can do about it. So if you have PCOS, you need to watch this video because you want to learn about that connection and keep your blood sugar healthy and intact. For the best information on gut health and hormone health and rebalancing your gut and hormone health, hit the subscribe button now and the bell to be notified when I post new videos every Friday. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. I'm a functional medicine doctor, registered dietitian, nutritionist, and family doctor. And I help people improve their gut and hormone health so they can reclaim their health, reclaim their vitality, and rediscover the magic of feeling well through functional medicine and healing nutrition. I've helped thousands of people with their gut and hormone health, and I can help you. So if you have PCOS, today is a great, or today's video is a great video to start watching this channel because you can learn more about the connection between your PCOS and your blood sugar as well as PCOS and your cholesterol and your metabolism. So we're going to be talking a bit more about PCOS in this video and the next upcoming video as well. And I have a ton of videos on hormone balance, so check those out. So let's talk first, if you don't even know what PCOS is, let's talk about that. It's polycystic ovarian syndrome. So classically, we used to define it as um having found cysts on the ovaries when you do an ultrasound, plus some other diagnostic criteria. Now it's kind of morphed more into the diagnostic criteria of having excess testosterone in DHEA in women, or, or DHEA in women, as well as some other markers we can look at. You know, PCOS is highly linked to blood sugar problems and triglyceride elevation, so like a off um, cholesterol test. So if it, your doctor says your triglycerides are high or your bad cholesterol is high. Those are two different things, but they can be linked to PCOS. So you do want to pay attention if you've been told you have PCOS. Pay attention to this video and the information we're going to cover because you want to keep track of your blood sugar. You want to keep track of your cholesterol. Make sure you're optimizing your and reducing the symptoms that can go along with PCOS. So the majority of women with PCOS do have blood sugar or not necessarily blood sugar problems, but insulin resistance. And let's talk more about what insulin resistance is, because it can be both a symptom of PCOS and a cause of PCOS. So insulin resistance. Insulin is what helps us get our blood sugar out of our bloodstream and put it into our cells so that we can use it effectively and it doesn't you know, lead to diabetes. So that's where insulin is, is the the Basically, the receptors on the cell unlock the door when insulin comes in with that blood sugar. It helps to un be the key and unlock the receptor door and then allow that blood sugar to go where it's supposed to be. So when it's not working right, that's when we have blood sugar problems. So in insulin resistance, our pancreas is overproducing, it's overreacting to when we eat um, sugar or com carbohydrates or when we need that insulin, it over, it's overreacting, producing more and more insulin because those receptors aren't really unlocking the door or the whole mechanism is not unlocking the door. So the pancreas thinks, oh, I need to keep producing more. And then your cells get even more resistance to that, to resistant to the insulin. You have more inflammation and you have weight gain. So we do want to work on that insulin resistance. So the insulin resistance itself, when you have that excess inflammation and that insulin, that can drive more testosterone and DHEA. So it can kind of be a vicious cycle with the PCOS. What can we do about, or how do we check for it is the next thing I was going to talk about. So we can check what I do in my practice. The most common thing I do in my practice is I check a fasting insulin level. So you just, you know, you can do it through LabCorp, Quest, whatever your lab might be. And it just your doctor can do insulin, check it off, and you do go in fasting. So at least eight or 10 hours of not eating or drinking anything with any kind of calories in it. You can have some black coffee, black tea, water, 
but go in fasting and then you're going to get a good um, measure of what your fasting insulin is. You can also do more advanced testing, which we do in my functional pr medicine practice also, which is one's called HOMA IR and the IR stands for insulin resistance. Um, we do that through Boston Heart. There are some other more advanced functional medicine labs that we can do that through. And it's, it's a blood test too. You can also um, test your a two-hour glucose challenge test. So those are like if you've been pregnant and they do that blood sugar, you drink that nasty stuff, and then they check your blood sugar um, right after you drink it, and then like an hour, and then two hours after. That is um, one way to that's an example of a two hour glucose challenge test. So that one takes a bit more time. You know, we do it sometimes, but it's a little easier to do the others and they give us um, actual levels of the insulin resistance. But the benefit of the two hour blood sugar or two hour glucose challenge is it kind of shows us how the blood sugar reacts. So all of them have benefits and you can do all of them to really get a clear picture. Now, traditionally in conservative medicine, the pharmaceuticals they're going to use with PCOS and insulin resistance are metformin, which is a blood sugar, I mean, a diabetes medicine originally. We use it for a lot of other purposes now sometimes. And then they might put you on an oral contraceptive pill to kind of control the excess estrogen or the potential estrogen dominance. In my practice, if I have to, I will do that. But I will start with, you know, we're looking at the diet. Let's lower your sugar. And I have lots of videos on that, the connection between sugar and hormone imbalance. So check those out. There'll be a playlist down below. Let's also work on fructose, which is a type of sugar in particular that can drive insulin resistance. We also treat with myo-inositol or d inositol which are kind of B vitamin derivatives that can help to lower that insulin resistance, to help to lower the testosterone, DHEA, and to kind of get the hormones more in balance. I use myo-inositol more often, but sometimes I'll use a combination of myo-inositol and d inositol I'll put some ideas down below of the ones that I like. And then um, we also use magnesium often, and that can help in so many different ways in hormone balance. So magnesium overall is a net positive, as long as you're just not overdoing it. And we have quite a range, anywhere between 200 and 1200 milligrams that are safe to take. It's just the more you take, the looser your bowels could be. So you can check out some of my other videos to learn more about that. And then I have one on signs of a magnesium deficiency you can check out. So... We also, though my magic secret bullet, magic bullet, secret weapon, is what I was trying to say, um, is an herb called berberine. I love berberine. And berberine is so multifaceted in what it can help with. It has been tested against metformin and studies head to head has worked just as well. Some studies have combined berberine and metformin and have even more uh, results to lowering insulin resistance in women with PCOS. What I use berberine for is this, yes, PCOS and insulin resistance. I also use it in general and for men with blood sugar problems. I will use it for blood cholesterol like triglycerides or elevated LDL. I'll use it for gut health. If somebody's gut is really imbalanced, berberine can help kill off the bad guys and rebalance the good guys. So it has a lot of benefits. And the dosing usually is between 300 and 500 milligrams three times a day. Granted, I am not your doctor, so I do not know what's safe for you. So please run that by your healthcare provider. Make sure you are taking a safe dose for you, for you from a reputable source. And any of the links I have down below are reputable sources. I also focus on exercise, healthy exercise. When your testosterone is high, you may not want to overdo the weight lifting because women would have higher testosterone or women who have higher testosterone will bulk up a bit more, more easily. Um, but you probably want to do cardio, maybe some HIIT training, which stands for high intensity interval training. And I have some videos on that. Um, or, you know, Pilates, yoga, just kind of working to get the heart pumping, get the muscles working and get some potentially some of the excess weight off because if you have excess weight in PCOS, you're going to drive more of that inflammation and that insulin resistance, and it's going to get more into that vicious cycle. So those are some ideas behind what links PCOS and insulin resistance and what you can do about it. Be sure to, to subscribe, to hit the bell, and to share this out if you know anybody with PCOS. Drop me a comment down below. I love hearing your comments on what potentially 
you might be experiencing with PCOS or hormone imbalance and what you've done to help and any questions you might have. And join me next Friday to learn more about rebalancing your gut and hormone health through functional medicine and healing nutrition. Thanks so much. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. I'll see you next week.